Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.4 Beta 1. iOS 18.4 Beta 1 is available to developers, and iOS 18.4 Public Beta 1 will probably be out soon by the time you're watching this video or early next week. Now iOS 18.4 supports all iOS 18 supported devices and has more features than just Apple Intelligence, and I'll label those in the chapters below as well so you can jump between Apple Intelligence and features for everything. Now this came in at a very large 7.72 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, was about the same size on all the devices here, as Apple also released iPadOS 18.4 Beta 1, macOS 15.4 Beta 1, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.4 Beta 1, along with VisionOS 2.4 Beta 1 and watchOS 11.4 Beta 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22E5200S. And this particular update has quite a few changes and features. And the first thing is a new modem update. So if you install from 18.3.1 to 18.4 beta one, we'll have a new modem and hopefully that helps with overall connectivity as I was having some odd drops, some people in other countries were having issues and we'll have to see if this resolves those issues. Now, when it comes to Apple intelligence, there's quite a few new things here to talk about. The first thing is it's available in more areas in this update. So when it rolls out in April, according to Apple, they had a press release. It will be available in French, German, Italian, Portuguese, or Brazilian Portuguese, Spanish, Japanese, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese simplified, as well as localized English for Singapore and India. So those will be available in April, according to Apple, and they've also added some new Apple intelligence features. One we've been waiting for for quite some time has to do with notifications. We now have the option for prioritized notifications or the priority notifications many of us have been waiting for. You'll see it says Apple intelligence can show you notifications that may be important in a separate section on the lock screen so you can catch up on what you may have missed you can still swipe up to view all notifications. So if you enable this, you'll start to see it. I haven't seen one yet and you'll see it here. So nothing new here yet with priority notifications, but that is something that should start showing up. If we go into the keyboard and within the keyboard, if we tap on the emoji keyboard, you'll see it says Genmoji. Prior to this, it was just the little icon here. Now it has the icon plus the word Genmoji. They keep changing this. However, we still don't have the updated emoji to comply with the latest Unicode standard, such as a harp. If you search for that, you won't find it. So that's something that's coming a little bit later. As far as features that don't have to do with Apple intelligence, we'll come back to that in a little bit as there's more to talk about. The first thing has to do with news. This should be available to everything. And if we go into news and you tap on following, you'll have a new food section. Under food, we have a recipe catalog along with saved recipes and featured recipes. So we can scroll through this, go into our recipe catalog and see thousands of recipes. We have dinner, easy, vegetarian, dessert, and more. So if you want to cook something quickly, you can see 30 minutes. 30 minute recipes, and those are available in news in 18.4. Something else Apple announced has to do with Apple Vision Pro. With Vision OS 2.4, they've added some new features, and maybe I'll do a separate video on that, so let me know if you'd like to see that. But that also comes along with a separate app. So if we scroll down in this press release, while I don't see it yet in my iOS 18.4 update, you'll see we have an app here where we have, it says this week with my vision pro. And if we scroll down, we'll have guest user with iPhone and iPad. So we'll have an easy way to pair this, select the apps and make it much better when you're trying to share this with someone else. So it says with vision OS 2.4 users can start a guest user session with their nearby iPhone or iPad. So again, let me know if you'd like to see this in a separate video. We also have some new features that have to do with accessibility. So if we go back into settings and then we go back to accessibility, under accessibility, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, go to Siri, at the top we now have a type to Siri option. It says Siri will listen for voice input when you press and hold the side button. So that's not there in previous updates under this menu. If we go into the control center, we have something all new as well. You'll see I have a music note there, but if I press and hold, add some new controls, we have a whole new section for ambient music. We have sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. So if we want to play those or add those, we can add those. And then we'll go ahead and play one. Let me turn it down here. So we'll play this. It goes into its own app and plays a meditation. So you'll see Stardust Dreams. And if we go out, you'll see we have an all new ambient music app, but it's not a separate app you can find, but you can activate it from the control center. One thing we don't have in the control center yet are updates for the iPhone 15 Pro to use the action button like the iPhone 16e or 
SE4, as many people thought it was going to be called, where you can use the action button to activate visual intelligence. That is coming later, it just doesn't seem to be in this update. And iOS 18.4 Beta 1 is still not available for the iPhone 16e yet, so maybe that will be in Beta 2. As far as other things in the control center, if we go back in and you'll take a look here where we have Wi-Fi and cellular, the icons now represent the current signal strength. So I have full Wi-Fi and one bar of cellular that can change from time to time, but it now is reflected in those icons specifically. With iPadOS 18.4 beta one, Apple has added the update for mail. If we go into mail, you'll see the all new categories here where we have all mail, we have primary mail, we have the different categories, and then we can switch it back in the upper right. So we can categorize the sender, we have primary, or we can just switch it back altogether to all mail. And if you don't wanna use this again, go to this option and switch it back to the list view. We also have support for additional languages here. So on the iPhone side, you'll be able to use German and other languages if you want to use this new mail or inbox. And also within the Apple Pencil settings, we have an update here. So if we go into settings, and then we go down to Apple Pencil, and within Apple Pencil, go to Double Tap, we have a new option for Hover that allows Double Tap with only Hover, or only with Hover. Turn this on, and then you can use Double Tap while you're using Hover specifically. Another new Apple Intelligence feature has to do with Image Playground. If we go into something I've created before, this is a lighthouse, go to Edit, and tap the plus button, we can now have the option to change the style to a sketch. This is something Apple promised a long time ago, and now it makes it a sketch, illustration, or animation. So you'll see that's the illustration, go back to animation, and you have different styles there. So if you wanna use a sketch for any of the different ideas you have, you can now do that. Now, as far as anything else, well, Apple is disabling a feature in the UK, advanced data protection. Unfortunately, this is due to a new law in the UK where Apple was ordered to create a backdoor, but instead they've disabled basically end-to-end -end encryption. So if you're in the UK and you go into your settings, then you go to your account at the top, and then you go into iCloud, scroll down, you'll see advanced data protection. You'll have a new message here at the top that looks like this, thanks to a user in the UK that sent this along, but it's showing you that you will have to disable advanced data protection. So unfortunately, this is what the current state is in the UK as far as this feature goes. Maybe it will change in the future, but Apple will have to work with the government on that. As far as anything else, well, Apple did fix the iPhone 15 Pro wallpaper. If we go to add a new wallpaper, scroll down, you'll see that they're here. So we have those here in our collection where we can add that to the 15 Pro if you want to do that. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes or resolved issues, let's take a look first at the release notes as there's quite a few things here. This is the public facing release notes. I'll link in the description. And if we scroll down, you'll see there's quite a few new features for different developing options. And then if we scroll down a little further, there's some known issues with Apple intelligence. There's also some deprecations and resolved issues for notifications such as scrolling through notifications might cause them to flicker or collapse momentarily. That's been resolved. And then there's some known issues for Siri and additional deprecations updated things such as system calls, and more if you're a developer as well. So I'll link this in the description, known issues with Wi-Fi calling as well on US cellular, and known issues with writing tools. One thing they haven't resolved has to do with the lock screen. So if I scroll up here, it resaturates. Now I like it to be saturated, it's not desaturating, but it seems to go back and forth this way. Also when you switch to tinted icons, it seems to fix that, so if we switch here, so we'll go to edit, customize, switch to tinted icons. We now have a dark mode for the center icon here where before this was just white. So they've resolved that as well. Also something else, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but if we go into the control center and we scroll down on the volume, it turns to white. So you can see that here, I'll scroll down, it turns to a white icon, then it's blue as I scroll up. So I'm not sure if that's on purpose or if that's a bug. As far as lag and stuttering, well, there's definitely some here when I used it initially. Now, I don't know if that will go away as it finishes processing in the background, but there was definitely some stuttering throughout. That's even on the 16 Pro Max, but we'll take a look at performance in a moment. When it comes to releases, well, iOS 18.4 beta two could be out as soon as next week, or typically every two weeks for the first couple of betas. We don't really know as we do expect this to release in April, but we don't know if it's going to be the beginning of April or some way through April. So at this point, we know that they're working on the next beta. We also know that they're working on iOS 18.5. So Mac Rumors is seeing that in their analytics. And since we're going to have a release in April, 
in the meantime, we could see iOS 18.3.2. Apple recently stopped signing iOS 18.3, and that would be for some bug fixes, maybe a few small features such as the action button update for the iPhone 16e or possibly the iPhone 15. So we'll have to wait and see if that's what they're working on. As far as the overall performance, well, like I said, at the beginning, it started to stutter quite a bit. And overall, I have it on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and iPhone 16 Pro Max. I had problems installing it on the iPhone 11 through the computer. So we'll take a look at that maybe in the weekend follow-up. But overall, it seems to be smooth with ProMotion, with scrolling. No real issues there, but there's just odd stutter throughout. So if we go into music, go back out, it seems smooth now. But again, it will take a few days to notice after it's done processing. When it comes to the heat, well, the device is definitely warm, so it's processing in the background. And overall benchmarks show that, and we'll take a look at a moment. But the overall battery intelligence we've been waiting for just isn't here yet. I'm surprised they haven't included it. That would just tell us how much time there is left to finish charging, but it doesn't seem to be here. Also, standby mode seems to be working fine. So if we go ahead and lock the display, we'll hold it still, see if it goes into standby mode here. There we go, we're in standby and widgets are working as well. So some people were having issues with that. It seems like it's working properly. As far as the battery, well, there is no battery intelligence, like I said, but let's go ahead and take a look at the battery. So we'll go back here and then we'll go into battery, battery health, and this has got 100% capacity with 130 cycles. This is my main phone and it's still holding up well there, but again, it's update is finishing in the background. So it's going to take a while to know if battery has improved. If we take a look at the last 10 days, well, so far today, I have three hours and 22 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 57 minutes of screen idle time. That's even after installing this. So I have 63% left. Prior to this, I had two hours and 54 minutes. So it's actually doing a little bit better about the same or so. So again, we'll see if it improves. As far as storage, let's take a quick look at that. We'll go to general and then iPhone storage, give it a second to load, as I believe this is taking up a little bit more storage than we saw before. So again, if we scroll down, this is taking a moment here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that iOS is taking up 19.93 gigabytes. It was around 18 gigabytes before. Apple intelligence has increased in size to 7.56 gigabytes, where iOS is 12.37 gigabytes. Typically when you install an update, it overwrites the old one and then deletes what it doesn't need. So it's not taking up additional storage other than about a gigabyte extra for Apple intelligence. As far as if you should install iOS 18.4 beta one, well, if you need to test this for developing an app or something along those lines, then definitely. However, I typically recommend people hold off, see how it is for a few days, wait till the public beta comes out and see if it improves anything as iOS 18.3.1 seemed to be pretty good for quite a few people. So I wouldn't rush out and install the beta unless you want to try out the latest features. As far as benchmarks, I did run those and the initial scores are not that great. Again, it's still processing in the background. The back of the phone is warm, so we'll take a look, but you'll see 3,403 for single core, 8,307 for multi-core. It's not terrible since it's processing so much data, but it is down about 450 points or so. So at this point, we'll have to check it in the weekend follow-up after it's done installing everything and running in the background. But let me know if you've seen better scores or anything different or if it's finished for you. So that's everything so far with iOS 18.4 beta one. If you found additional features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>